yeah, I just wanted to spend some time with y'all, man, because really, you know, sometimes I get lonely. I don't like to hang out with too many people. You know, all my all my my my, my main homies working. Shout out to um Nico Oliver forty forty. I got the vision immediately and I was like, yo, this guy one day, you could ask anybody I know, I said, this guy's gonna be a, a megastar one day, he just gets it. I mean, we were working so hard trying to achieve just recognition. I mean, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. Right. Um, and I suppose even when we had been recognized, we didn't realize it and we just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Right. Um, so at this stage now, we sit back and you know stop and realize, like, wow, he's really one of the biggest artists in the world. I mean, I never thought I'd be able to say that. 11 years straight of dominance on the chart. Where that dominance comes from is not just from Drake, but people he's surrounded with. When you guys are sleeping in tents at the OVO studios and people are walking over you, right, to get to where they need to go, what's that mentally? When we in 40 lock in, we really lock in and yeah. we take it very serious and it's not, it's not some like rush job. It's an obsession. It's long hours, scary hours. I, uh, I had a vision, I had a dream at a, at a younger age to be a, a rapper. That's what I wanted to do. I used to be on a television show called Degrassi and I wanted to be a, <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to be a rapper more than anything in the world. Um, and I realized that I wasn't able to really facilitate that dream by myself. And I was blessed over the course of my life to meet two individuals. Uh, one of them is, is Boy Wonder and the other one is 40 and uh yeah. and together we uh together we took our experiences in a in a city called toronto and we turned them into music and uh i remember you know me and boy wonder used to record in the studio and there were like rats running around on the ground and you know i mean we spent we spent many a night we were in the studio and there was like it was really run down you know like we were really we didn't care that it was run down. We just wanted to record music. You know, there's like, the engineer is like chasing like mice and trying to step on them. You know what I'm saying? So, but we didn't care. We were just like, yo, we want to get to where we want to get to. And I met Drake through a friend of mine who's another producer and um, who's also his musical director on tour named uh, Dalton Tennant, D10. I had won a beat battle and, um, in Toronto and I met up with D and, you know, we became friends. We started making music together and he's really like, yo, man, you should listen to my boy's music. He's really dope. You might know who he is, he's the guy on TV on Degrassi, and I was like, I remember uh, particularly hearing this song from him when we got connected. Um, he played me a song of his called Money. You know, you'd think a rapper rapping about money, there's so much cliche things to say, but you know, he really brought it from his own perspective, and it was really dope. He just like rapped about like keeping his receipts. And I was like, yo, this is this is hot. Yeah, this is probably the only place. Divine that... Brown, though. Divine Brown. Yes, Divine Brown, yes. Your first writing credit? My first writing credit on a real album. First song I produced on a real album. I was her engineer, so I was engineering her album, and she was she believed in me enough to give me a chance to produce a record. And she used one of my records, and this was it. And you brought in your good buddy? Okay, no, that's the first day I met Drake. Wow. 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 Socrates brought him because Socrates was producing all of the records on this album and I produced this one and so he got Drake to come in and do a remix and Drake and Boy Wonder came to the studio and that's the first day I met Drake. Wow. I was crafting all these songs and I had a song uh, that Omen produced uh, by uh, it was me and uh, Mickey Fax. Dre had heard the song and um, and he had hit me like, man, I need proof that you wrote this. I had to fax him the lyrics of the song. Serious. I had to send him a fax <laughs> message, like from my mom's fax machine in her bedroom. I sent him a fax. And I was, uh, I was flown out uh, to uh, record at Record One, um, which is a legendary studio. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was in there for a while. Um, I did a lot of work, me and 40. Um, 
always brought 40 with me. With me, that was like a stipulation in my career. I, I wouldn't move without 40. Got to meet a lot of great people. Obviously, got to work with Dre. Dre gave me, a, uh, he brought me into his office. He's like, man, you're doing really good work. And uh, he gave me a $10,000 check. And I, it was the most money I'd ever had in my life. And at the time, I was in a relationship. So I, uh, I got the money and I like called my girl and I flew my girl down to LA and I was like, oh, we could get a hotel. This is crazy. <laughs> like, you know, it was just a joyous moment for me. <clears throat> and I had, uh, I had missed studio or I had done something right. wrong in the, in the, you know, just I had let let that I had let my mind deviate from work and I right. had missed something. And um, you know, next thing I know, I was you know I was sent home and that was kind of it. Um, that's crazy. And it was a huge, it was a huge life lesson for me, you know. Right. Um, when Drake came out uh, at the um, at the forum, I uh, brought him the, the ten thousand dollar check because wow. I had saved the actual hard copy of it, even right. though I got the money for it. Yeah. They let me, they let me keep a wow. copy of the check. So um, yeah, that was kind of my my uh, my my dealings with that very early on. It was a great experience, a learning experience for me and 40. It brought us closer um, and it just taught us about how this, you know, how this really works. Um, and I think that, that that set us on our own path. Family and friends, you know, I, I got good people around me and we're making good music and, and we're healthy. Those are the most important things, you know, and, and that's it. I gotta ask, I gotta ask Dre. This is your boy. Y'all make classic music together, man. So like, what is your three little digs for 40 turning 30, man? Oh, man. To be honest with you, man, nothing, nothing's really gonna change for me, you know, I mean, as, as great as birthdays are, as, as much, especially as we try and make them, it's just like, like you said, we got work to do. So, you know, as soon as the cameras go off, we'll, we'll eat a little cake and <laughs> we'll take right. our ass right back to work and shit. But no, I mean, you know, really to me, uh, everything's on, everything, you know, is on, we're on the, you know, on the path. Everything is, you know, going the way it's supposed to go. So something and then it actually happens and then like it happens again and it happens again and you just wonder like does it run out what is it is it desire or is it hunger like when you guys are sleeping in tents at the OVO studios and people are walking over you right to get to where they need to go what's that mentally what's going on yo we couldn't first of all we couldn't believe that people slept at a professional studio yeah because we learned that from our mentors. They just were so dedicated and loved what they did so much that they couldn't put it away. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And we were like, you will work to your ver the very last drop of your energy in your body. How do we get to that point? When we're close to delivering a project, I'm, I'm up for four days in a row because I have to. Be. And whoever's in that room with me, whether it be Drake or an intern that we have, is also up for those four days. You know, and you have to be able to endure. And then the other thing is work ethic. You have to work as hard or harder than I am. So, that's really hard to do. You can be working so hard in here that just to get something done feels nice. Then you gotta wake up and realize, like, was it actually good or yeah, did yeah. we just finally get something done? Yeah. But the discipline, the hardest part of it is really walking away from those those moments, right? Not oh, being in the gross. studio for four days straight with my brother, you know, like that's that's tough. I miss that, you know, and um, 
that's sort of a, of a big, big sacrifice. But I guess I, I sort of save up that energy to the end of the process and, you know, whatever. I'll stay up for the last two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Just, just not for the whole two years. Morty was ahead of everything. He knew what he was doing. He knew, you know, how to get Drake the music he wanted and then how to get it out the way he wanted. And that dictated a lot for Drake's career. And, you know, it's about the people you surround yourself with. Your team is what can make you the biggest possible. If you don't have a good, solid team around you, and this is when I do those What Happened To videos, a lot of these artists run into label issues and they run into managers stealing money from them and they run into, you know, just a lot of... That happens a lot. Yeah, so when you surround yourself with great producers, great uh, business people, just people that share your vision is very important Drake's worked twice as hard as everybody in this business from day one Drake has had to win a hundred times over for people to take him seriously and he keeps winning and he's still winning and he's still under that criticism it's crazy to me but we actually have to work, work, work for it again and again. And we keep doing it. No harder it is to catch those records. We've been doing it for a decade more. He keeps doing it again and again and again. It's crazy.